Good morning friends, welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. In this video, I am going to explain what is DQ data structure in Java. In short, it is also sometimes called DEC data structure. So without making any delay, let me go through the video content. In this video, I am going to cover what is DQ data structure, what are its internal working and a demo code which is written in Java programming language. So let's see what is DQ data structure. So what is DQ? If I have to say a DQ also known as a double ended queue is an ordered collection of items similar to the queue. Just like normal queue, it also has two ends front and rear. The main difference between the queue and the DQ or a doubly ended queue is that in DQ the insertion and deletion of the elements can happen from the both end. So it don't follow the FIFO principle which is the first in first out principle. Let me explain this concept using a diagram. As in this figure you can say I have inserted 5 elements into a queue. According to the definition of a DQ it's a doubly ended queue which means I can insert an element from either of the direction. I can insert it from the rear end or even I can insert it from the front end. Similarly, the removal or the deletion of the element can also happen from the any end. I can remove the element from the rear end and I can remove the element from the front end also. But as you have seen that in the linear queue or a normal queue, the deletion of the element always happens from the front and the insertion of the element happens always from the rear. So this is the main difference between the linear queue and the deck queue. Moving on in this video, let's see what are the different types of the deck or a doubly ended queue. If you see, there are basically two types of deck present in the data structure. One is the input restricted queue and the other is the output restricted queue. In the input restricted queue, it states that in this deck, the input is restricted at one end but the deletion can be done from both the end which means that the input is restricted not the deletion whereas in the output restricted DQ the output is restricted at one end but the insertion is allowed at both the end it means that the output is restricted which means the deletion of the element is basically restricted but the addition of the element can happen from both the end Let's understand these two types of DQ using a diagram. So in the input restricted queue, as it states that the input is restricted, which means that insertion can happen only at one end. You can choose either the front end or even you can choose the rear end, but you have to select only one end for the insertion. Whereas the removal or the deletion of the element can happen from the both the end. So this is the input restricted DQ. We have one output restricted DQ also as it states that the output is restricted which means the removal of the element or the deletion of the element is restricted but the insertion or the addition of the element can happen from both the end. For this also we can choose any one of the side for removal or deletion of the element. We can choose here the rear end for the removal or we can choose here the front end for the removal. Once we decided which end we have chosen, we cannot switch it. And again, the insertion or the addition of the element can happen from any one of the end. So this is the two types of DQ present in the data structure. So let's see what are the basic operations performed on the DQ. There are mostly four operations we perform on any doubly ended queue. One is insert at the front. So insertion or addition of any element at the front. There is one more which says insert at last, which means add an element at the rear of the queue. Again, we have one delete front, which means the delete or remove an element from the front of the queue. Similarly, we have one delete last method, which will delete an element from the rear of the queue. In addition of these four frequently used operation, we have some four methods which will say get front. It means give the element from the front of the queue. 
in this case it will return 78 again there is a get rear which will return an element from the rear of the queue in this case it will return 45 we have one method which will tell that the queue is empty or not and similarly we have one method which will tell the queue is full or not so these are the basically all together eight methods mostly used for any DQ operation moving next in the slide we can see how this Java DQ is implemented in Java so in Java we have one iteratable interface this iterable interface is again extended by a collection interface this collection interface again extended by a queue interface which will ultimately extended by the DQ interface but this DQ interface is gets implemented by a linked list class or a array DQ class there is one main difference between this linked list implementation of DQ and the array DQ implementation of this DQ interface in the linked list the capacity or the size of the DQ is not limited whereas in the array DQ the size and the capacity of this DQ is limited let's see how we can use this DQ interface or this linked list class using a demo class in Java so moving on this slide we have a Java demo code so let's move in Eclipse and see how these things are getting executed so for the sake of the time I have already written that Java demo class and I have already defined or I have already used some methods which I can explain so let me run this code into the debug mode so that I can execute one one method one by one and you can see what these methods are actually doing as an operation so let me run this code in the debug mode so at first what it has done is created a linked list class which can hold a string now if you see dq.add is going to add one element into the dq now see this dq is initially empty now I'm, when I'm saying add one element it is actually going and adding one element into this dq so you see I have added one and it got added into this queue after that I can add one element at the first so if I'm pressing f6 you see this two element got added into the front so this is the front and this is the rear link it is a link list right so this is your first and this is the last element representing now let's run one by one and see what these things are getting executed now at last if it is saying add last so where this three will get uh, added it will get added after one so let's run this code see three got executed and it got added after one now this push so dq dot push is going to add this four in front of two so it will add in front see this four got added in front of two similarly this offer is going to add the element at the last so see this offer is adding the element at the last this five got added after three similarly this offer first is going to add one element at the beginning so if I am executing this line it will go and add the six in front of four similarly offer last is going to add the element at the last of the position so it will add after five and if I am going to print this full DQ you can see this it, it printed all this DQ which we had in the debug mode uh, showing in the heap area you can see here all these things are getting printed now this is one way to print this DQ there is one way we can print this DQ also is using the iterator so let's see how we can print these values using using the iterator so, so we can initialize this iterator using dq.iterator and then we can use the while loop using the has next condition so if this iterator will check that is there any element present in the queue and if it is present as the next element it will print or else it will terminate so let's execute this while loop see while loop is executing now 642 it is keep on printing now 1 3 it will print 5 and it will print 7 also once it printed 7 it will terminate there is one more method in this DQ interface which can iterate in the reverse direction so this is the way we can iterate in the reverse direction so let's iterate in the reverse di direction also once so see here uh, in this it will print 7 first 
then 5, then 3, then 1, then 2, then 4 and then 6. Once it printed 6, it will come out. After that, we have one method is which will say peak. So peak is the method which will take the element from the first. So it is going to pick the element which is at the first position or at the beginning position. So the 6 was at the beginning position, right? So it picked that element. And after picking that element, you see one thing. It is not deleting that element from that queue. It is just picking. It is not deleting. So this is one big thing you have to notice. This pick is not going to delete the element from the queue. With this dq.pop, it is going to pick the it is going to remove that element from that queue. So if you see, see here, this if I'm using this dq.pop, it actually removed that six from the dq. But if you are using this pick, it is not removing that element from the queue. See, this is the reverse one, right? So you can ignore this. Check this one. So this is the actual DQ we, which we have. Now, when we are using this DQ.pick, it is picking this element 6, but actually it is not deleting that element. But if we are using this pop, it is actually going to delete that element from this queue. So after using this pop, you can see this is the DQ left with us. So in this, you can see there is no 6. After that, we have one method which says contains. Contains is used to see that particular element is present in the DQ or not. So if DQ.contains3, and if you see this 3 is present in the queue, right? So this will return true because it is checking that 3 is present in the queue or not. As it is present, it is returning true. Now, after that, we have an element which says remove first and remove last. So this is the element you can see we have left in the queues. Now, if I'm saying remove first, it is going to remove 4. And if I'm saying remove last, it is going to remove 7. See, after this removing these two elements, we can print and it is printing that left element. So we have 2, 1, we have 2, 1, 3 and 5. The same thing it is printing here also. So these are the basic operations we can perform on any DQ or doubly ended queue. So this is all about the DQ data structure for a beginner level. We can see how we can implement this DQ using the some different data structures in our next video. Hope you like this video. If you have any doubt, please write it in comment section. I will try to answer it. For time being, have a great day and goodbye.